لأمري وحل قدة من الثاني يقول قولي نستغفر الله ربنا من كل ذنب ونتوب إليك ربنا زدنا علما اللهم يسر ولا تعسر وتمن بالخير يا فتاح يا فتاح يا فتاح من رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, we're starting from Surah uh, Al-Ra'at, ayah number twenty-seven. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Wa yaqulu al-ladina kafaru laula unzil alayhi ayatun min Rabbi. Those people who disbelieve, they say, why hasn't a sign from Allah come yet? Qul inna Allah yudillu man yasha wa yahdi ilayhi man anab. Tell them Allah misleads whomever he whomever he wishes, and he guides whomever he wills to, uh, and he guides. Whoever repents to him to this right path. So meaning the one to follow their desires, they will never find an ayah. Even though there's ayah, they will never find it. But the people who are really want to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will see ayat all around them. <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> the people who have iman and their hearts are content. They are satisfied in the remembrance of Allah. No doubt about it. It is only in the remembrance of Allah that hearts find uh, peace and tranquility. Right? The people who are who are constantly engaged in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will see the ayat of Allah everywhere in their life, around them. You know, everywhere they will see that. Uh, those people who have iman and they, and they do good deeds, they will have tuba. What is tuba? It's going to be happiness. They will have happiness and a good place of return. Tuba is also the shade in Jannah, right? That will take a, a horse rider 100 years to cover the shade. It's a huge tree in Jannah. It's called Tuba. So Allah says, people who have iman and do good deeds, they will have Tuba lahum wa husnu ma'ab and the best place of return. كَذَلِكَ أَرْزَلْنَاكَ فِي أُمَّةٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا أُمَمْ لِتَتْلُوا عَلِيهِمُ الَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَهُمْ يَكْفُونَ بِالرَّحْمَن Thus, we have sent, uh, sent you out missed a community before whom have passed away many other communities. So you may recite unto them what we have revealed to you, even though they disbelieve in the most merciful. Say that he is my Rabb. There's no one worthy of worship except him. On him I rely, and to him I turn in repentance. ولو أن قرآن سجرت به الجبال أو قطعت به الأرض أو كل ما به الموتى. If the Quran were to set in motion the mountains, right, make the mountains sail, or or it were to split the earth, or if the dead were to speak, it would have been the same, right? What doesn't matter what miracle would have come to them, nothing would have. Uh, you know, uh, made them change. بل لله الأمر جميعا. Rather, Allah's command, all command belongs to Allah altogether. أَفَلَمْ يَيْأَسِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَلَّوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ لَهَدَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Those people who believe, do they not know that had Allah willed, He would have guided mankind as a whole, all of them. وَلَا يَزَالُ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا تُصِيبُهُمْ بِمَا صَنَعُوا قَارِعَةٌ أَوْ تَحُلُّ قَرِيمًا مِنْ دَارِهِمْ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ وَعَدُ اللَّهِ and they don't care that a calamity will afflict them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or, uh, or it would, a calamity would come to nations near them until the, the, until the promise of Allah comes, meaning until death comes, that azab can come to you before that. In Allah, verily Allah does not break the promise. Verily, messengers were mocked at before you. But I gave them some time for the disbelievers. Then I got a hold of them. So how was my punishment? Is then, the, is then he who watches over everything for what it acquires? Like the false god who can do it? That's uh, in between meaning. That the one who watches over everything, can that person be equal to the one who is a false god who doesn't do anything? They are making partners with Allah. Ask them to name these gods. Or you informing him, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of what he does not know in the land. Meaning you are saying Allah has partners that Allah is not even aware of. Or is it mere 
a matter of words without reflection. No, the uh, their plot and their opposition against Islam has been beautified to the disbelievers. And it has been prevented them from the straight path. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads them astray, that person will never have a way, a guide. They will have a punishment in this worldly life. But the punishment of the hereafter is more severe. And they will not have any protector against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these disbelievers, they're going to have two day of judgments. One day of judgment is in this dunya. That's their adab. And then the actual adab of the akhirah will also be there, and they will not have any protector against Allah. Mathal al Jannah al Muttaqun. The example of the people of Jannah is that which is promised to the righteous ones, right? Tajri min tahtil anhar. They will have rivers, they will have gardens with rivers flowing. A river will be flowing underneath them. Ukuluha da'imun mazilluha. There's going to be fruits all the time in these plants, and there's going to be shades. Such it will be the reward for those who have the fear of Allah. But for the reward of the disbelievers is going to be the fire. Those people whom we have given the book, they are happy with what Allah has revealed to them. Meaning the believers are rejoicing. Allah commands this in Surah Yunus that you know, rejoice. Those people who are given the book, they rejoice with Allah, with what Allah has revealed to you. But there are some from among the groups that reject. They disown, reject a part of it. Tell them that I have been commanded, I have been ordered that I worship Allah and I don't associate partners with him. To Allah is my, uh, to Allah that I call upon and to Allah is my return. And thus we have sent it down, this law, this hukum in Arabic. If you were to follow their desires, Ya Rasulullah, after the truth has come to you, after knowing the knowledge, you will not have against Allah any guardian or any protector. And indeed, we have sent out messengers before you. And we made, we made wives and offsprings for these messengers. Right? The Quraysh thought that the prophets are someone different from human beings. They don't have women and children. They don't have worldly needs. They don't have the cardinal desires. No, that's not true. Many, all the messengers that we sent before had wives and sons and, and offsprings and don't ask the messenger to bring you know miracles because he does not bring a messenger cannot bring any miracle except with the permission of Allah every single matter is written down everything is recorded in a clear book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases what he likes and he keeps what he likes one of the arguments the Quraysh had was, why did Allah send so many books? It's the same message. Why Torah and Injil and Quran? Why so many books? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, says, Yamhu Allah, Allah removes, erases what he likes and he keeps what he likes. Yuthabbit. Wa'indahu ummul kitab. But the, the mother of all the books is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The al-mahfuz has everything preserved, even though uh, some things may have been changed by the people. But ultimately, everything is preserved with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, whether we make you see some of the punishment that we have promised them, meaning in, the, in your lifetime, you might, you might see their punishment or you might see their death, but at the end of the day, they will come to us, their hisab is on us, and we will make sure they're punished accordingly. You know, these are ayat of, of in, in Makkah, right? Makki surah, right? Some, some ayat of Madri. But these are ayat from Makkah, uh, and the Prophet has already told that your ummah is going to be punished like this, right? The Quraysh are going to be punished. This is a promise of Allah, and that's why the Prophet is crying in the night, begging Allah to forgive them. He's begging them to accept the message because he knows what's coming. 
رايت بينما عليك البلاغ وعليل الحساب اولم يروا ان نات الارض ننقصها من اطرافها did they not see that we are shrinking the earth at the extremities of it right reducing it means that the land of kufr is taken by the land of iman right the slowly slowly like the entire kufr is gone out of mecca and so did, did they not see that they're already losing as and you know, as they are uh, persecuting you wallahu yahkumu la mu'aqqiba li hukmi and allah decrees and there is none to amend his decree allah decides and nobody can change it wa huwa sari'u al hisab and he is quick in taking account wa qad makara alladhina min qablihim those before them also plotted falillahi al makru jami'a but allah's plan is the best and altogether belongs to him ya'lamu ma taksibu kullu nafs allah knows what every single individual is acquiring wa sayalamu al kuffar liman uqba dar and the disbelievers will soon come to know who to whom belongs the final abode who gets to win at the end the disbelievers will soon come to know wa yaqulu alladhina kafaru lasta mursalam and the disbelievers they say that you are not a messenger they they reject you as a messenger qul kafa billahi shahidan bayni wa baynakum you know what allah is sufficient as a witness between you and me i don't need you to testify that i'm a messenger allah has already testified that i'm a messenger that's more than enough as a testimony wa man 'indahu 'ilm al kitab and even the people of knowledge have also testified to this the right? people of knowledge referring to the jews and christians the true people of knowledge from the jews and christians like abdullah bin uh, salam has acknowledged and he looked at the face of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and says this can be the face of a liar and he became a muslim so the people of knowledge ilm al kitab are testifying to it. it doesn't matter if the whole world rejects it right so that's what the ra'd um end of that surah uh, again speaking to the quraysh um and acceptance of uh, oneness of allah akhirah and risala uh ibrahim so ibrahim move on to the next surah inshallah surah number 14 and this surah is revealed also during intense persecution so it's very important to understand the context of surahs um so we can understand it accordingly right so intense persecution muslims you have to be in that zone then you can understand the ayat better because allah is talking very firmly strict against uh, the disbelievers so here allah presents the truth and the falsehood and he asks the people to use their intellect to choose the right path right that's something that's common to all whether you are believer you are born muslim or born non muslim intellect is something allah has given you okay allah has given you eyes and ears to see and understand and reflect so that's common use that to choose the right path bismillahir rahmanir rahim alif lam ra kitabun anzalnahu ilaik we have revealed a kitab a book which we have sent down to you ya rasulullah Why did we send down this kitab? To free the nas from the dulumat to the nur, so that you can take people out of darknesses to light. This is the purpose of kitab: that to take people from different shades of darkness through the, the darkness of atheism or Hinduism or Christianity, Judaism or all kinds of you know messed up beliefs people have about sexuality. To free the nas from the dulumat to the nur, you take them out of darkness into the nur. Be it the Rabbi him with the permission of your Rabb. You cannot guide them, but Allah is the one who will guide. You're just a means. Ila sirat al aziz al hamid to the path of Almighty and the most praiseworthy. Allahi alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Allah to whom belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. Wa wailu lil kafirin min azab al shadid. Woe to the disbelievers. May the disbelievers have a valley in Jahannam uh, because of their disbelief. Min azab al shadid of a severe punishment. الذين هو ذا ديسبيليفرز الذين يستحبون الحياه الدنيا على الاخره there are those who prefer the worldly life or the hereafter they may not it doesn't mean that they don't believe in the hereafter they might believe in the hereafter but they prefer the worldly life this could be a case of a muslim too that dunya and akhirah but he prefers the dunya over the akhirah right that is a cause love for this dunya is a cause of their disbelief right anytime there's a clash between dunya and akhirah they will choose dunya over akhirah wa yasudduna an sabilillah and they prevent themselves and they prevent others from the way of allah wa yabghunaha iwajan and they seek it to be crooked ulaika fi dalalin ba'id those are the ones who are going to be in far away misguidance that are straight far away from the right path wa ma arsalna min rasulin illa bi lisan qaumihi li nubayyana lahum and we did not send down any messenger to any nation except that he came with the tongue of his people that he may clarify to them 
meaning every messenger spoke the language of their people, spoke the dialect of their people, understood the norms of society. And not just like, you know, if you're, if you're sent to Canada, not just you speak English, but you also have to know the norms, the culture, the you know what the what the do's and don'ts, how society functions, what are the darknesses of this society. It's very important to know that, right? So if you're growing up in this community, it's a huge blessing of Allah because you know how the system works. You know how the people are. You can understand their mindset. You can you know give da'wah accordingly. If you're growing up in other lands, you know you know exactly how it works. So Allah says that we send out messengers that spoke their language that came in their tongue so they may clarify to them, right? So that's why it's very important that we start da'wah in our communities first before going out to another community and giving da'wah because your, your community understands you better and you understand them better. Allah misleads whom he wills and he guides whom he wills. Messengers comes with the best message but the response is two. Some accept, some don't accept. Allah is almighty and all wise. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجَ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّامِ And in fact, we have sent down Musa alayhi salam with our signs that, that he may, you may take your people from darkness to light. Job of a messenger, to take them from darkness to light. So we sent Musa alayhi salam to his people and we told him to remind the people of the days of Allah, good days of Allah, the favors of Allah, another another. Uh, tip in da'wah is remind people of Allah's favor that what Allah has given you that will turn them towards the hamd of Allah towards salah towards praising Allah verily in that are many miraculous signs for a nation or for people who is for, for someone who is extremely patient and extremely grateful and when Musa السلام, said to his people, O oh people, remember the favor of Allah upon you when he rescued you from Fir'aun. He used to inflict on you the evil of persecution. He used to slaughter your sons and keep your women, women folks alive. Verily, in that was a great trial. And when your Lord announced, if you are grateful, Allah will increase you. This is the, the job of a messenger to teach people to be grateful to Allah, to enumerate the blessings of Allah and ask them to do shukr to Allah. This is ibadah. This is worship, right? That only Allah has provided you. Be grateful to him. And if you are grateful, this is a very important statement here. If you are grateful, Allah will increase you. Increase you in what? Allah doesn't mention that. Allah will increase you in your money, in your life, in your, you know, in your good deeds, in everything you wanted in your life, in barakah in your life, Allah will increase you. And also in good health. But if you are ungrateful, see, kafara is the opposite of shakara. If you are kafar, do not disbelieve, but if you're ungrateful, in the shadid, verily my punishment is great. Waqala Musa in takfuru, antum woman fil ardu jami'an, fain Allah ghanim hamid. And so Musa Islam said to his people, if you are ungrateful people, then you and, and everyone in the world is ungrateful to Allah. Indeed, Allah is above want and He is praiseworthy. He doesn't need, nothing will be reduced from Allah's praiseworthiness because He is hamid and He is ghani, He's rich, He's above want. أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَبَأُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ قَوْمِ نُوحُ وَعَادْ وَثَمُودُ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ Didn't the news of the people before you come to you, like the people of Nuh, Aad, Thamud, and those after them, did you see what happened to them? لَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّهِ None knows about them except Allah. جَاءَتْ مُرْسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيْنَاتِ Messengers came to them with clear proofs. فَرُدُّوا أَيْدِيَهُمْ فِي أَفْوَاهِهِمْ What happened every time the messengers would come? They're, they would put their hands, they would put their hands in their mouth, right? They would bite their hands. Why? Out of anger, jealousy, hatred towards the messengers. And they would say, indeed, we are in doubt about what you call. Right? We disbelieve in what, with what you are sent with. We believe, disbelieve in the Quran that you are sent with. And we are in doubt about what you call us to. 
qalat rusuluhum and the messengers used to say afillahi shakkun fatir as-samawati wal ard do you have any doubt in, about allah he is the creator of the heavens and the earth if you doubt allah then you doubt that sun and moon and the entire creation exist if you don't if you don't and you know, on disbelieve in the creation of allah then you cannot disbelieve in the creator yad'ukum liyaghfir lakum min dhunubikum he calls he, he calls on you that he may forgive you for your sins وَيُوَخِرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجْلِ مُسَمَّمْ And he, you know, puts off the punishment for a set time. قَالُوا إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُنَا The response of the people was, you're a human being just like us. تُرِيدُونَ أَنْ تَصُدُّونَ عَمَّا كَانَ يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا You want to turn us away from what our forefathers used to worship. فَأْتُونَا بِسُلْطَانِ mubin. Show us a clear proof, an authoritative proof that you are a messenger. The messengers told them, we are only human beings like you. But Allah favors whomever he wishes from his servants. Meaning some servants, he chooses to give them revelations. We are human beings, we're not someone special. We're just like you, we eat, we drink, we do everything. But we, Allah has favored us by sending us revelation. It is not up to us to bring any authoritative proof except with the permission of Allah. And only in Allah should the believers rely. What is wrong with us that we should, we will not, why should we not rely on Allah? Another way of worshiping Allah, another manifestation of Allah's worship is tawakkul in Allah, reliance on Allah. That we don't rely on anything, we don't depend on anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now the messengers are giving da'wah to the people. The, the, and the, the way of da'wah is they are actually talking to themselves. They're not saying, what's wrong with you that you don't have tawakkul in Allah? What is wrong with us that we will not, we should not have reliance on Allah? Waqad hadana subulana. When he has guided, all, guided us all this way, you know the fact that the way you came out of your mother's womb, right? Uh, you know the passage that that to which you, uh, you came out of the mother's womb is the guidance of Allah. Allah gave you guidance to exit your mother's womb, right? That's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah talks about this in Surah Al-Abasa, right? Summa sabila, summa sabila yassara. Anyways, waqad hadana subulana. When he has guided us to our, you know, to our ways, walanasbiranna ala ma adaytumuna. And we are going to be patient over whatever problems we go through. Whatever persecution we are going through, we are going to be patient with that. Only in Allah should those who rely should rely. So the disbelievers said to the messengers, indeed, we are going to expel you from this city. We're going to take you out of this land or we are going to return you back to our religion. Right? Their belief is the prophets were disbelievers and then they the revelation became believers. But the truth of the matter is, they never uh, did shirk in their life. Even the Prophet Sassam never worshipped idols, never bowed down to an idol. So it's like, they are telling you, we're going to return you back to, you know, idol worshipping when they were never ever idol worshippers in the first place. Anyways, And so Allah revealed to them, we are surely going to destroy the wrongdoers. And we will settle you in land after them. And that is for those who fear the standing before me and the one who fears my threats. Right? I'm going to establish who in the land. I'm going to establish you in the land. And that is the people who fear the standing in front of me. And who fear my threat. And they sought a decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they became and they failed, right? Every single tyrant uh, you know failed in achieving that, right? Behind him is hellfire, and he will be made to drink of water made of pus, right? All the all the bodily liquids that you know that melts. When you burn a human being, that, that liquid that comes out, that will be the drink. Also, when you get a wound, that pus that forms the white blood cells, they will be that will be the drink in Jahannam. They will gulp it down, but will hardly, they will hardly swallow it. 
right? There's nothing else to do. They will have to drink it. And they will call for death from all places, right? The death will come to them from all directions, but they will not die. You know, like the hit that's happening, you know, the hitting is as if they will die. The way they drink, the boiling water is as if they will die. Intestines will rupture and they will die, but they will not die. And above and over above it, there is going to be a very severe punishment, right? So this is, uh, you know, uh, the warning given to the Quraysh of Mecca, right? The example of those who disbelieve in their, in their Lord is, is like the following. Allah says, those people who disbelieve, all their deeds are like ashes. They're going to be turned into ashes and they're going to be blown away in a really, uh, you know, uh, windy day, right? We're blown away, like the way it's, it's blown away, all their deeds their dazzling culture, grand civilizations, wonderful kingdoms, states, universities, sciences, literature, charitable work, everything they have done in their life is going to be all crushed, right? And blown up, right? Uh, like the ashes are blown in uh, a windy day. Because, you know, actions are based on intentions. If our intentions are not clear, if our intentions are not pure, no matter how great the work is, no matter how long it has lasted, everything will be turned to dust. They will not have any power to acquire, you know, get back what they have done, what has been uh, turned into ashes. That is going far away from the straight path. Didn't you see? Didn't Allah give you eyes? Didn't you see? What's wrong with you? Alam tara, did you not see Allah created the heavens and the earth with purpose, with some, with there's a reason behind all of this. If Allah wills, He might remove you and He will bring a new creation. And that is not difficult for Allah to do. And they are going to become, they will come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all together. Right in an open land, they will come stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The weak people are going to speak to those people who are arrogant. The strong, the weak people will speak to the strong people, right? The people who are following, the followers will speak to their leaders. Hey, we used to follow you all this time. We used to, you know, uh, like you on Facebook, on Instagram. We used to follow your page. We used to support you guys, fund your organizations, you know, follow your style, everything, you know, share posts that you would do. We, we took you as leaders, role models. Could you like help us today against the punishment of Allah a little bit? Like, you know, some benefits you can give us back. They would say, had Allah guided us, we would have guided you. Meaning we ourselves are misguided. Why did you follow us? We were not on the right path. It makes no difference today, guys. To you and me, we are both on the same ground, right? Either uh, whether we are rewarded, whether we are worried, or we bear with patience, makes no difference. We cannot escape from this place. This is going to be going to stay in Jahannam forever. And Shaytan is going to speak when the matter is over. Meaning when judgment is made, Jannah, Jahannam, people are sent to Jannah, Jahannam. Shaitan has a pulpit in Jahannam. You know, the khutbah, the khatib gets on top and gives a khutbah. Shaitan has his like pulpit in Jahannam made out of fire. And he will ascend that and he's going to give a khutbah in Jahannam. He knows he's going to Jahannam. He's going to give a khutbah in Jahannam. In Allah wa'adakum ba'ad al-haqqi wa wa'adakum. Indeed, Allah promised you the true promise. And I also promise but I disappointed you. For I did not have over you any authority. I didn't have power to, I didn't have access to your heart. I, I'm, I could not have become the driver of your heart unless you let me in. Right? I didn't have any authority over you, only that I gave you the invit invitation and you responded to it. Right? I only told you, hey, do that. Hey, steal that thing. Hey, no, nobody's watching. Do that. Do this, right? 
you responded to me. Don't blame me today. Blame yourselves. Right? I cannot help you today, nor can you help me. I disbelieved in my Lord way before. Right? And the transgressors will have a painful punishment. And the people who do, who have iman and good deeds, Allah will enter them into gardens under which rivers will be flowing. They will remain in it forever with the permission of the Lord. salam. And as they enter, their greeting is going to be salam. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Alam tara kaifa tarab Allah mathalan kalimatan tayyiba kashijaratin tayyibatin asluha thabit wa faru'uha fi salam. Do you not see how Allah gives an example? Now Allah is going to give an example of a tree. And what is this tree? A good word, kalimatun tayyiba kashajara. A good word is like a good tree. Meaning a person who says, la ilaha illallah, shahada, who believes in shahada, acts upon shahada, follows tawheed, is like a tree. And this tree is going to have three qualities. One is asluha thabit. It has firm roots. This tree has firm roots. And it has... Branches that go up high in the sky. And the branches go up um, high. And this tree, it gives fruits all season, right? With the permission of the Rabb. And Allah gives examples to people so they may bear in mind. What is his example? A believer is like a tree. His roots are very strong. His iman is very strong. No matter how much wind, what the societal pressure is, what persecution comes his way, he is going to bear it. He's going to remain strong, not going to move, tree like a tree. And then branches go up very high. Branches, different branches signify different good deeds. He does all kinds of good deeds. That's what plants do. They benefit others. So a believer is constantly benefiting others, and he gives fruits. And not just once in a while, not a seasonal fruit, but throughout the year, he's giving fruits, right? Benefiting others. This is... Uh, Allah comparing the person who follows the truth and the person who follows uh, falsehood, right? A believer is optimized. He's doing the greatest benefit to humanity, right? Just like a tree who keeps giving, never asks for anything in return. On the flip side, But the example of a bad word, meaning he doesn't follow la ilaha but follows the wrong religion, wrong beliefs, or a false belief is like a weed. Imagine a weed. What happens to it, right? It's like a tree. It's like a bad tree that is uprooted from the earth, having no stability, right? A small wind comes, small pull, that's it, gone. So, you know, people who have weak iman, they just need some small push and they will leave their iman very, very soon. We said, Allah makes firm those who believe with the firm word. Right? In this life and in the hereafter. Meaning those who follow the truth, those who hold on to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, the, the, the teachings of Allah and His Messenger, they are going to have what? Allah will give them firmness in this dunya. Give them istiqama to remain firm on that deen. Just like Allah gave istiqama to Yusuf alayhi salam. In times of difficulty, he remained a believer. So Allah will give him that in this dunya and in the akhirah. Right? So in this dunya, staying firm on deen, and in the akhirah, you know, and as soon as a person enters a grave, the Prophet tells us to make dua for him and saying, Allahumma thabitu, Allahumma thabitu, Allah make his feet firm, make him answer this question. Allah is the one, this is, is based on this ayah. We thabitu Allahu alladhina amanu bil qawli thabiti fil hayati dunya bil akhirah. Wa yudhillu Allahu al-zalimeen, and Allah misleads the wrongdoers. Wa yafhalu Allahu ma yasha, and Allah does do us what he wills. Ayah number 28, Surah Ibrahim. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ بَدَّلُوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ كُفْرًا وَحَلُّوا قَوْمَهُمْ دَارُ الْبَوَارِ Did you not look at the people who replace the favor of Allah with disbelief? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet ﷺ in the midst of them. It's the biggest favor they had. Allah sent Quran to them. Biggest favor they had that replaced the favor with the azab of Allah. Kufran as disbelief. And so the, uh, and they have set, and settled their people in the abode of ruin. Meaning they are living 
in a place that's about to be destroyed. Jahannam yaslawnaha. Hell will be the place they're going to be burning. al-qarar. What a bad place of resting that is. And they set up partners with Allah so they may mislead them from the straight path of Allah. Tell them, keep enjoying, keep doing the wrong. Indeed, your final destination is the fire. Your final stop is the fire. Enjoy in the meantime. In the bus, whatever you want to do, enjoy in the bus. But when the bus stops, it's going to be the hellfire time. Say to the servants, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa those people who believe, tell them, uh, the people who establish salah and they spend from what Allah has given them secretly and openly before a day comes where there is going to be no trading or no friendship. Right, tell them, uh, inform them of this. Right, this is what the believers should be doing that they should be involved in these actions. What establishing salah, spending from what Allah has provided, whatever Allah has given you, give back to Allah your time, your energies, your money, right, your health, your, your, you know, your efforts, give back to Allah secretly and openly uh, before a day comes when no. And no friendship will help. Allah who خلق السماوات والأرض وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم. Going back to Allah, right? That remind the job of messengers what to take people out of darkness to light to show the كرهم بأيام الله. Inform them of their days, the good days of Allah. So the messenger is reminding us of favors Allah has given us. Allah who الذي خلق السماوات والأرض. Allah created the heavens and the earth. You know, whatever you enjoy on this earth is because Allah created it. Different places you go have fun. Why? Different food you eat, different things you enjoy, right? The coolness, the, the, the AC and the heating and the comfort and the cars and all that is because Allah created it. So Allah is the one who created this. One salam and he sent out water from the sky so that it brings out crops for you as provisions for you. And he made the ships, you know, subservient to you. He made the ships, you know, for you. So you can sail in them in, in service to you. So you may proceed in the sea by the command of Allah. And he made the rivers in service to you. I think about this, right? If you have like a, like a coin, if you drop the coin in the ocean, it will sink. It will sink. A pebble will sink. Yet a boat, you know, subhanAllah, Allah has made it, right, with low density, so it's able to sail on top of the water, right? Allah has made these principles. says no i don't want to come today resting day no this is a creation of allah you are believer like that too was constantly giving fruits all the time and he made the night and day in service to you and he gave you everything that you asked for to make your life comfortable he gave you everything if you were to count one blessing of allah you will not be able to count it not, the, not all the blessings. Take one blessing, not the blessing of hand. Just think about the amount of things that are in this hand that is helping us grab and work. You know, one blessing, you keep thinking about one blessing, the amount of benefit it has, you will never be able to count the blessings of Allah. Ni'matan, then you think about all the other blessings you have. You will never be able to actually count the blessings. Innal insan al kafar, but human beings are very unjust and they're extremely ungrateful. Uh, one of the job of schooling is to teach people uh, of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Because schooling, you're exploring the world. You're exploring these things, the creation of Allah. It should teach you to be grateful and automatically when you learn the right knowledge, it will make a person humble and submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And why is that today people go to education and learning and they don't become submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather they become more arrogant, Right? They think all they have is their own thing, their intellect. Why? Right? SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanAllah, uh, he's teaching us to be grateful by reflecting over the creation. 
And a biggest example of gratitude is Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Allah brings the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. People. So whoever follows me, he is of me. And whoever disobeys me, indeed, yeah, Allah, you're most forgiving and most merciful. Meaning, whichever sons follow me, he is from me. And whoever disobeys me, like the Bani Israel have disobeyed me, then you are most forgiving. Oh my Rabb, indeed, I have left my son Okay, my progeny, my offspring in a valley without any cultivation near your sacred house. This is Hajra and Ismail salam, left in a valley, no cultivation, no water, nothing. Right? We just talked about previously, Allah sent down water from the sky and he brings crops. But Ya Allah, I have left them in a place where there is no crops, no life exists. Oh Allah, please make sure that they perform salah. The first thing a father would think about, ask Allah, is yeah, Allah make sure they are provided for, take care of them, may Allah send water from the sky, you know, give them, you know, risk and all that. But he, say, he says, I know that you can guarantee that. Yeah, Allah, you are the creator, you will provide for them. I don't have to worry about that. But the thing that I worry the most is the Iman. Yeah, Allah, give them Iman. This, is a, this should be the worry of every single parent that are my children going to have Iman? Then all the risk, then, you know, I want them to have a good job, good degrees, whatnot. That's all comes. But first thing is Iman. Is my Iman going to be preserved? رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ So they may establish Salaam. فَجَعَلْ أَفِيدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ مُرْزُقُهُ مِنَ الثَّمْرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ So make the hearts of some, some men inclined towards them. Right? Why is the Salah first and then the rest of the things? Because, Ya Allah, if they become people of Salah, then when, when they start loving you, people will start to love them automatically. Right? When you love Allah, what happens? Allah makes an announcement and he says to Jibreel, Oh Jibreel, I love this person. You love him. Jibreel makes an announcement to the angels saying, Oh angels, Allah loves this person. I love him too. You should love him. So the angels start to hang out with this person. When angels are there, people are attracted na naturally. And so he says that make the hearts of people inclined towards them and give them provisions of fruits. Then fruits come, then provision comes so that they may be grateful to you. Look at the sequence. So they may be grateful to you. Meaning that if you give someone fruits, food, whatnot, and they don't teach them, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll never be grateful. But if you teach them about Allah that He provides, and then you give them the blessings, then they're going to be, you know, beneficial. That's where Umar bin Abdul Aziz, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, when he left this world, he left, you know, few dirhams. And people ask, Oh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, you have very few dirhams. You should take care of your, you know, of your children. You know, you have to provide for them. You know, give them things. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimullah, he says that if I leave behind some good amount. Right, and if my if I leave uh, you know wealth behind, and if my people my children are not following the message of Allah subhanahu wa taala, then they will misuse it, this money. So I don't want to leave any money behind. And if they are following Allah subhanahu wa taala, they are close to Allah subhanahu wa taala, then I don't have to worry about the risk. Allah will take care of them. So either way, he says I'm not going to leave any money because Allah will take care of them. Right. So this is so important that Ibrahim is first teaching them, asking Allah to give them salah first. Salah, and then they may be tashkurun, so they may be grateful to you, Allah, when they get the blessing. Rabbana inna ka ma wa ma Our Lord, verily, you know what we conceal and what we disclose. Wa ma min shayin fil ardi wa la fil samam. And nothing is hidden from Allah in the in the earth or in the sky. Alhamdulillah, alladhi wa habli ala al kibri Ismaila wa Ishaq. Oh, praise and thanks to Allah. Look at that gratitude. He's showing how to be grateful to Allah. All praise and thanks to Allah. Ya Allah, I'm grateful to you. He's teaching us how to be grateful. That he has granted me, Ibrahim, sorry, Ishaq, uh, Habili, um, 
uh, على, على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق He has granted me إسماعيل and إسحاق in all age إن ربي لسميع الدعاء Verily my Lord answers, my, uh, answers the prayer ربي, ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة من ذريتي Oh my Lord make me make me the one to perform salah and also my progeny Allah make them people of salah ربنا وتقبل دعاء Oh our Rabb accept my prayer accept our prayer accept our dua Subhanallah. Again, he's still focused on salah. Rabbana gfilli wa li walidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumu al-hisab. Our Lord, forgive me and my parents and the believers on that day, on that day of hisab. Wa la tahsabanna Allah ghafilin amma ya'mal al-falimun. So that's the example of shukr, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ultimate, best example. Wa la tahsabanna Allah ghafilin amma ya'mal al-falimun. And never think that Allah is unmindful of what the wrongdoers are doing. Don't think Allah doesn't see the wrongdoers. إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting them do things until a day comes when the eyes are going to be staring. They're going to be like, تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Eyes are going to be dilated, like shocked. When you see something and your eyes are like, oh my God, that's what will happen. تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ مُهْضِعِينَ مُقْنِعِي رُؤُوسِهِمْ Running with their necks protruded, uplifting their heads. And their eyes will not fall back. They will not move their eyes an inch. The eyes are going to be just fixated and they'll be moving forward. And their hearts are going to be empty. Oh messengers, warn the people of a day which comes. Uh, uh, when the punishment comes to them on that day, the disbelievers, the wrongdoers will say, oh, our Rabb, defer this. Can you just give us some time? Do not bring this punishment now. Give us some more time so we may respond to your call and we may follow the messengers. Allah will respond at that time. Didn't you swear that you will never die? That nothing will happen to you? And you did live in the habitats or in the place of those who had wronged themselves. Meaning you came after the people who were uh, destroyed. And and everything was clarified to you. And didn't you see? Didn't you see how we dealt with the nations before them? And we gave you examples of them, of past nations, of so many stories of the past. And they had plotted their plot, but with Allah, Allah had his own plot. And their plot and their planning against Islam, against the believers, was so great that it would have destroyed even the mountains. That's how great their plot was. And don't you think that Allah will break his promise to his messengers? In Allah Azizun Zuntiqam. Indeed, Allah is Almighty and the master of retribution. Meaning the messengers, Allah has promised that they're going to be victorious. They're going to be superior. So don't think Allah will break that promise. They are going to be superior. They will defeat you in this dunya, and in the akhirah, you're going to have humiliation. On that day, the earth is going to be replaced with another with another earth, and the heavens are going to be replaced as well. And Allah will merge in front of them, the one and almighty. And you will see the sinners are joined together, fettered together, chained together. You know, like prisoners are taken with chains on them. This is how the Mujrimeen are going to be taken to Jahannam. Sarabiluhum bin Qatiran. And their garments will be made of tar. You know, the, the tar that's used to make roads, right? That, that heat, that hot thing, the black, that will be their garments. That will be the heat. Imagine that you are wrapped around a road. And fire will wrap up their faces. So Allah may reward or punish every single individual for what they have acquired in Allah. Allah is quick in punishment. This is an announcement, a proclamation to all mankind, a reminder to all mankind. So that they may be warned by it, warned by this reminder. And so that they know that your Lord is one Lord and the people of deep thought can bear in mind 
This is why Allah has given you this another reminder. Okay, let's see. Reminder from Surah Ibrahim. I think it's a good time to break for Asr, inshallah. So, break for Asr right now. We'll continue after this. Subhanallah <laughs> Okay, so we're starting from surah number 15, surah al-Hijr. Um, this is also a Makki surah, and this surah is revealed right after surah Yusuf. Um, so again, Makki surah, the focus is Tawheed, Risala, and Akhirah. In this surah, Allah will talk about the, again, past nations, what happened to them when they rejected. And, uh, and the nation of Salih um, alayhi salam, meaning Thamud, uh, this, the place where they lived is called Hijr. That's what this is called, Surah Al-Hijr, because Allah will talk about them as well in detail. Allah will bring the story of Adam and Iblis to show the disobedience of Iblis, that Iblis is the reason, Iblis wants to have shirk in this world. And that's why Allah is telling the Quraysh that you should not follow Iblis. Rather, follow the Prophet ﷺ, who's calling you to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and then in the surah, the surah also ends by talking about the great favor of Allah uh, by sending down the Quran, right? Allah will compare the believers' luxuries in this dunya to, say, disbelievers luxuries in this dunya to the believers' Quran, right? So that's, a, that's and Allah will say what you have is way greater than what they have. Okay, and in this surah, Allah advises the believers to be patient against the opposition. Okay, uh, so we'll begin. Uh, just a small uh, announcement before we continue that inshallah from tomorrow we'll be starting the class a little early at 4.45 p.m. Inshallah. So 4.45 p.m. Uh, we'll be starting it. Okay, so Zayfafi, please take note. And we'll just be here, inshallah. Okay, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayat Min Kitabi Wa Quran Al Mubin. These are the signs of the book and a Quran that is open. A, that is clear. The disbelievers will wish that they were Muslims, right? When they will see the paradise, the believers enjoying in paradise, they will be shown paradise, by the way, to show what they have missed out. They will see the paradise and they, when they see Jahannam, they will say, I wish we were, we were like, we were Muslims and we were in Jannah like them. Leave them alone, let them eat and enjoy in this dunya. Let them be distracted with the long hopes for this dunya. You know, if I do this, 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 I'm going to get this in this dunya. Let them be distracted in those hopes. Soon they will come to know. And we did not destroy any nation that, except that it had an appointed time. A set time was given to every nation. When that time comes, a nation does not proceed for an hour or, or does not uh, delay doesn't come early or doesn't come late exactly on time and they will say oh the one who has revelation sent down on him oh the one the possessor of recital the one who recites the quran indeed you are crazy you are majnoon you are mad why don't you go up and bring angels with you if you're truthful Right, we want to see angels walking with you. And Allah responds that the angels only come with purpose, with a reason that is to bring punishment, and that will not be delayed, and they will not be given any time when the angels actually come with the punishment. And we, in fact, are the one who have sent down the recital, and we are the ones who are going to preserve it. We're going to preserve its text, its understanding, uh, you know, the application in the form of hadith. Everything is going to be preserved. We will, we will, you know, preserve it. It is not the one he's reciting the kitab, but it's actually sent by us. The dhikr is sent by us. And if we had sent down 
before you many parties of the old. Many scriptures were sent before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Every time the messenger would come, they would make fun of him. That is how we let it enter the hearts of the sinful people. Right? We let disbelief enter into the hearts of the sinful people because of their actions. They will not believe in it. They will not believe in the messenger, even though they have seen what happened to the previous people, uh, previous nations. Allah says, if we were to open up the gates of heaven and they were made to go up, you know, like an elevator or something like that, takes them up to the heavens and they see all the unseen realities right above there they would say oh my god our our eyes are intoxicated someone did magic on us see what we are seeing is an illusion right but rather we are people who are bewitched right some some kind of a thing done on us or some actually the opposite of that black magic is done on us and we have indeed set towers right in the heavens like these big huge towers these buruj and we have beautified the sky for those who see two purposes of the sky one is beautification another one is protection right also you can say guidance also guidance for the people on earth and we have secured the earth against every shaitan you know shaitan shaitan used to go and eavesdrop on the angels and you know steal information and come and tell other people on this earth about what is happening tomorrow because the angels will be discussing the command of allah that tomorrow this person will die tomorrow this will happen to this person the shaitan will you know eavesdrop but allah's path is secured it by these stars this constellation this buruj right this is like battalion angels waiting to shoot the shayatin down anyone try to steal any information and tries to escape a luminous meteor opens and open and clear follows him pursues him some say it's like a shooting star that attacks them shoots them down and we have made the earth spread out and we have put firm mountains on them and we have caused all kinds of vegetation to grow all that is well balanced right every plant has a certain height certain you know um, type certain number shape size etc it's all designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right exactly you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number of apple trees on this earth Allah decided a number of orange trees, Allah decided how, how long they should be, when they should give fruits, everything has been decided. So, mauzun, fi kulli shayin mauzun, that is well balanced uh, for the earth. And Allah made for you the means of living in this earth. And you are not the providers of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made clothing for you, food for you, you know, means of living, oxygen to breathe, all of that. Allah made that means of living. You were not the ones who made all of this. And the stores, the treasures of all things are with us, right? All the vaults of gold, silver, right? All the rizq, water, everything is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we send it down slowly over time in, in, in a precise measurement, right? Water, light, heat, minerals. Okay, energy, everything is sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in precise, you know, uh, measurement. Imagine Allah sending down all the water at one time, right? Sending down all the energy at one time, one time right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has balanced out uh, for us. And we send down winds as a means of impregnating the plant, right? Poll pollination. Right, it happens through the wind. So, and we send the water from the sky. That's we give it for you to drink. And you're not the ones who keep the storage. Right? Think about this, right? All the water was just in on the earth. How would it be? Right? We'll all drown in that water. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has keeps these, keeps it with us, with him. And whenever it's time we need water, he sends down you know, drop by drop. Right, imagine like a tube connected to your mouth and like constantly water is going down. All the water you need for the rest of your life is given to you at one shot, you will die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drop by drop over time, He sends down Allahu Akbar. And you, you are not the ones who have the storage for this. 
And indeed, we are the ones who give life and we give death. And we are the ones who are going to be the ultimate inheritors of all of these things. And you are fully aware of those who passed away. Those people who went before you, who died, you know what happened to them. And you know the ones who will come after. And we know, sorry, we know the ones who have passed away. And we know the ones who will come after you. And verily, your Lord is going to gather all of them. Indeed, he's all wise and all knowing. And we created human being from a dry clay, a rotten earth, from, from mud, molded. Allah created you from this mud. And the jinns, he created way before them from a smokeless blaze of fire. And when your Lord said to the angels, indeed, I'm going to create a human being of dry clay, rotten or from or of rotten earth. So when I made him up and have blown my ruh into him, and you all fall down to him in prostration, right? I commanded all of you to fall down, fall down in. Sujood. فسجد الملائكة كلهم أجمعون. All the angels prostrated all together. إلا إبليس. Except for إبليس. أبا أبا يكون مع الساجدين. He refused to do sajda. Right? قال يا إبليس ما لك ألا تكون مع الساجدين. What is wrong with you that you're not of those who prostrate? قال لم أكن لأسجد لبشر خلقته من صلصان من حماء مسنون. I'm not going to prostrate myself to a man. Who, whom you have created from a dry clay of rotten earth. Allah said, then get out of here. Indeed, you are cursed. And verily, you, the curse will be on you until the day of judgment. Look at this. Rabbi, my Rabb, you are my Rabb. He recognizes the Rububi of Allah. Oh, my Rabb, give me some time until the day of resurrection. Allah says, in that case, you are given time. Until a set time, until the day of judgment, I have given you time. Oh my Rabb, since you have made me go astray, you made you misled me. He blames Allah for his disbelief. You made me go astray, and you, you made it beautiful for them in the earth. I'm surely going to lead them astray altogether. I will lead them astray. This is a power of shaitan, the limit of his power that he's only going to lead, but it's up to us to follow him or not. Shaitan himself recognizes that the only ones whom I cannot mislead are the sincere servants of yours, like Yusuf. Right? Like when he was sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala diverted the evil from him. Away from him. Right? If you want to follow Allah, if you want to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not have any power over you. The moment you slip, you give up on one sunnah of Rasulullah, you give up on the Quran, then shaitan is going to attack. He said, This is a way uh, upon this is a way, uh, this this a way upon me, straight and right. Right? Allah says that the job of me, my job is to can show the right path. Verily, my servant, you will not have any authority over them. You cannot control them. Except for the one who follows you of the misguided ones. Verily, Jahannam is going to be their appointed place for all of them. Jahannam will have seven gates. And each gate will have an assigned section, right? Each group will be assigned to a, you know, a, a specific gate. Uh, just for your reference, uh, there are the seven names of Jahannam, the seven layers of hellfire are, the first one is Jahannam, it's called Jahannam. The second layer is called Sa'ir. Third one is called Lava. Uh, fourth one is called Hutama. And number, fifth, number five is called Saqar. And number six is Jahim, and number seven is Hawiya. 
All of these come in the Quran, all of these different names of Jahannam. And uh, the scholars also mentioned that each layer will be assigned to a particular group. So the first layer, the top layer is for the Muslims, right? The weak Muslims, they'll be thrown in Jahannam. And the second layer, Sa'ir, is for the Jews. Third layer, Lava, is for the Christians. The fourth one, uh, Hutama, is for the Sabi'in, the Sabians. Number five, Saqar, is for the Majus, five worshippers. And the sixth one, the lowest, like second lowest, is Jahim for the Mushrikeen, idol worshippers. And the last one, Hawiya, is for hypocrites, right? In the lowest level in Jahannam. But the people of Taqwa, the righteous ones, are going to be in gardens and springs. Enter, all of you enter in peace, being safe and secure. And we are going to remove all the malice and hatred they have for each other. And they're going to be become brothers sitting on couches facing each other. Right? So when I spoke about this before that when you when you have some problem with another person and both of you go to Jannah, inshallah. But before you enter Jannah, Allah remove all the hatred you have and disagreements you have for each other, right? So you're going to be brothers sitting on the couches, facing each other, talking, having a chill time, right? And this is when Ali radiallahu anh, when he hears this ayah, he says that Allah will purify the hatred between me, Uthman, uh, Talha, and Zubair, right? Radiallahu anhum, the disagreements he had. Uh, you know, will be purified. So Allah subhanahu wa says, will remove the hatred uh, that they have in this, uh, in their hearts. And in Jannah, Allah says, لا يمسهم فيها نصب وما هم منها بمخرجين. No fatigue will touch them. And they will not be removed from it. They will be remaining forever. And there will be no tiredness, no sleep, no laziness, nothing, no sweat even. And we know that in Jannah, we'll have the body of Adam alayhi salam. Huge body, right? Huge body. Um, and we'll have the voice of Dawood salam, we'll have the beauty of Yusuf salam, and we'll have the character of Rasulullah sallallahu right? That will be the people of Jannah, that, who, that is how Allah subhanahu wa honor us in Jannah. Nabbi ibadi anni al rahim O messengers, inform my servants that indeed I'm most forgiving and most merciful, right? Most forgiving and most merciful. But on the flip side, wa anna adabi wa al-adabu al and that my punishment is a painful punishment. So these are the two aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, punishment or mercy. For those who have iman, mercy. For those who don't have iman, punishment. And the next two stories are going to be of angels coming to Ibrahim and Lut salam. One is showing the forgiveness of Allah, the mercy of Allah and love of Allah by giving a child. And the other story will show the punishment of Allah to the nation of Lut salam. So when I beat him on by Ibrahim, so inform them of the guests of Ibrahim alayhi salam. If they call alayhi faqalu salam. Now when they entered upon him and they said, they said, salamu alaykum. Qala inna minkum wajilun. Ibrahim alayhi salam responded and he said, we are indeed in fear of you. Inna minkum wajilun. We are, we, I'm very scared about you. Qalu la tawjal inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin alim. Don't be scared. We are here to give you the good news of a son who is going to be very knowledgeable. This is referring to Ishaq salam now. First time they came was for Ismail, this one for uh, Ishaq. Bi Halim is Ismail. Bi Alim is Ishaq alayhi salam. Qala bashartumunya ala masani al kibaru fulma He said, Are you going to are you going to give me the good news though that has affected me old age? And I'm, in, I'm an old person. Of what then are you giving good news? They said, we are giving you the good news of truth and don't be in despair. Don't lose hope that you will not have a son. We are giving you that good news of exactly that. Now, Yusuf, sorry, um, Ibrahim السلام, is responding to the angels. Angels saying, don't be despair. Uh, don't, don't lose hope. And Ibrahim says, whoever loses hope in Allah's mercy, uh, so nobody loses hope in Allah's mercy except for the misguided ones, right? So he's responding to that, uh, you know. Feel, you know, also when people don't have children for a long time, when they have miscarriage or they lose the children, uh, you know, a child, they lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, yaqunatun rahmati rabbi, whoever loses hope in Allah's mercy of uh, that person is 
misguided. They, he said, then what is the matter with you, messengers? Why are you actually here? Tell me the real reason for you coming. Right? We have been sent to a nation that is committing sins. Except for the companions of Lut, the family of Lut, we are going to rescue them all together. Except for his wife, uh, we have decreed that she indeed will, will be of those who remain behind. You know, she will not be rescued. So the messengers came to the family of Lut He said, you are people that are unknown. I've not seen you before. Lut didn't know these were angels. So he said, you are munkaroon, nakira, unknown. Who are you guys? They said, we have come to you with that which you were in doubt about. And we have come to you with the truth and we are speaking the truth. So leave with your people in, in a part of the night and you follow in their rear. You be in their back because you have to make sure nobody is left behind. Follow them in their back. And let nobody turn back. Let nobody look back as to what happens and make your way off and just, you know, go to where you're commanded to go. And we have decreed to him this sentence that the root of these people will be cut off when rising in the morning, right? We know that the azab would come in the early morning. So we wanted that the azab should come and not a single person should be left. That's why the roots should be cut. There's nobody there to continue this evil act further. So Allah subhanahu wa decreed that. And the people of the town came rejoicing. You know, they, you know, they were happy that they were new guests in the town. So they wanted to uh, commit the act of homosexuality. Uh, and so they said, These are my guests. Do not disgrace me. Fear Allah and do not, you know, uh, humiliate me. You see, this is again another hujja, another argument against them. So the adab came right when they're engaged in that act of sodomy, right? So they are engaged in that act, and that's when Allah grabs them, catches them right at that point. So, and fear Allah and don't put me in shame. You know, just like the, like the wife, right? The Aziz, the, the wife of the Aziz in Surah Yusuf, right? That she did not honor the guest. Yusuf Islam was a guest. She did not honor the guest. And same thing is being, see, we see that here, that they're not honoring the guest. And rather, uh, look at the way how Ibrahim Islam honored the guest by giving, you know, roasted calf, you know, a fat calf. But look at the way they're not honoring the guest. This shows the difference in society. Shows how when you believe in La ilaha Allah, how your life is different. And when you believe in, you don't believe in La ilaha Allah, your life is different, right? The haqq and the batil is very clear. One gives fruits all season, one doesn't give fruits uh, at all. Right? One is firm, one is, you know, just goes with the flow. What the Allah wala tuhzun and fear Allah and do not put me to shame. They said, Didn't we not forbid you about the people? Right? Did we not tell you not to do not to stop us? He said, These are my daughters. If you have to marry them, marry them. Right, uh, you know, do whatever you want with them. These are they are halal to you. He's referring to his own daughters, or he's referring to the woman of the country because he's a father of the nation. This uh, part of the ayah is Allah subhanahu wa taala just speaking to you, speaking to the Prophet sallallahu directly, coming out of the story, and he says, "I swear by your life, Ya Rasulullah, I swear to you, they were in sakra, intoxicated, you know, deeply intoxicated, roaming blindly, right, with what they are." doing and so we seized them with a thunder blast while they were rising up and so we made the up the highest highest point the lowest point and we rained on them stones of baked clay verily in that are many miraculous signs for those who see closely three adab came Three adab came on this nation, right? One, a loud noise, a flipping of the city, and then rain on top of it, right? Three, three things came to them. And today, this act is considered normal. I actually got an email today from one of the parents who's 
was friends, kids go to, you know, public school and how they are making all of that, you know, the entire conversation of, you know, LGBTQ, everything normalizing has to be, they have to learn it and they cannot be excused from it. They're going to be, you know, they, they will, they will be projects on this assignments on this, uh, events on this, uh, before they used to excuse the religious people, but not anymore. Right. It's a norm. We have to know to accommodate them and know. And if a child is taught these things from a lens of showing that this is fine, this is normal, then how are you going to help them come out of this? Right. If that's what the kids are being taught, think about this. The reality is happening today. Right. Subhanallah. And look how the adab came on these people. It's a big, it's a big deal. Right. Uh, we don't hate the people who do this. We definitely hate the action. We don't support it. We don't, we don't want our kids to learn this. Right? The fitra is very corrupted. That's why it's suicide rate, one in five, I was reading the news, one in five Canadians have mental health problems. One, two, three, four. <laughs> one in five have mental health problems. Right? That's crazy. That's crazy. Right? Um, obviously, why do you think mental health problem happens when you go against the fitra? Right? following these actions, making it normalizing, right? Anyways, may Allah preserve us and our children and ask this to Allah, Rabbi Jalim, Muqim as-salati wa min dhuriyati, right? Oh Allah, make us people of salah and make our children people of salah as well, inshallah, ameen. Inna fi dhalika la ayati li mutawassameen, verily in that are many, many miraculous signs for those who see closely, right? Open up your eyes. Wa inna ha la bi sabilin muqim, and verily it is on a highway that is established. It's on a highway between Yemen and Syria, right? It happened right there. Why? Because so everyone can see them and learn a lesson from them. Inna fi dhalika la ayatan lil mu'mineen. Verily, in that is a, is a sign for the believers. It is a huge sign for you to reflect upon. Wa in kana ashabu al-aykati al-zalimeen. And indeed, the dwellers of the forest were also wrongdoers. Who are these people? The nation of Shu'aib alayhi salam. They lived in forest. So they are called the companions of forest. So they are also transgressors. So we avenge them. And they both are indeed on an open highway. Even they were very, uh, same as the Ashab al Hijr al And even the companions of Hijr denied the messengers, meaning the nation of Thamud, right? The nation of Thamud, Salih alayhi salam, nation denied the messengers. And we had given them our signs but they were turning away from it. And even actually the Sahabas actually stopped by this town, uh, by this town of Hijr, right? They stopped and they were, you know, uh, used, they fetched the water from the wells of Hijr. And the Rasul came to know that the, you know, the people are using water from here. They have halted here because he was coming from the back, right? And once he knows that they have halted here, he said, leave right away, right? Whatever water you had, whatever water you used to make the dough, throw everything, do not drink any water, leave everything, only you can give water to your camels and leave this place quickly because this is a land, Azab came, it's a cursed place, we should not be remaining here, right? And they used to carve houses in the mountains, they used to feel secure from the punishment of Allah. What happened? Allah has seized them with a thunder blast while they were rising up in the morning. Again, morning time, Azab came, and how did Allah destroy them? They were thinking, okay, no rain, no hailstones will come as, no, uh, no earthquakes will affect us. But one thing that can penetrate anything is sound. So Allah has sent sound as a punishment, noise as punishment to rupture their eardrums. Whatever they used to attain, make, did not help them at all. And we did not create, create the heavens and the earth except with and whatever is between them except with purpose. Indeed, the hour is definitely coming, no doubt about it. So ignore the opposition. Don't worry about them. Would it have forbearance? patience and ignore and keep moving. Verily, your Rabb is the one who created and the one who is all-knowing. And we have given you, Ya Rasulullah and the Sahabas and the Muslims, the seven oft-repeated ayats. Which ayat is, are these? Surah Al-Fatiha. Seven oft-repeated ayat and the great Quran, which is the explanation of Fatiha. Right, you know the companions. This is this. This surah was also revealed in the time of boycott. Right, Amr Huzun, and then boycott happened around the same time. 
And so uh, when the boycott happened, they would see that the disbelievers, the Sahabas would look at the disbelievers, like look at them, they have wealth, they have you know comfort, they have bed to sleep, they have you know everything. Allah, we don't have any of that, right? They would they're admiring the wealth of the disbelievers. And at that point, Allah reveals this part of the eye. He says that no, I have given you something great, way greater than what they have. Quran al -Azim. You have Quran, but they don't have Quran. Right? You have everything. You'll have everything they have, but they will not have what you will have. Right? Allah. Do not stretch your eyes to what we have furnished to some of them, nor grieve over them and lower your wings for the believers. Do not look at them. Do not you know, think about what they have. Think about what they don't have. Right, and what you have, which is a Quran, Allah Akbar. And say that verily, I'm a clear, open warner to you. As we have sent down on the previous nations that fell into sects, right? Different, different groups. Do we, we are, you are a warner, just like we sent a warner to the previous nations, like the Jews and Christians. The ones who made the Quran, meaning referring to the Torah, the ones who made their Quran into idin, sects, parts, right? Made different, different sections out of it. They believe in some parts, not the other part. Divided the Quran, divided their Torah, right? So we, you are sent as a same, like a same messenger, like the previous message, uh, previous uh, nations. I swear by your Rabb, we shall surely interrogate them about this. What the things they have messed up in their book, we're going to question them. You know, you'll notice this is something that every time, even in Makki surahs, Allah you know, gives a small pinch to the Bani Israel. Every surah, right? Like a small, like, you, know, you guys have done this. One, one, two ayat will come in every Makki surah. Something, right? We'll, we'll ask them about what they used to do. O Muslims, all of you, come out openly with what you are commanded to. Come out openly. Be confident. Speak up. And turn away from the polytheists, from the mushrikeen. We are going to suffice you, protect you against the ridiculers, against the people who are making fun of you. The ones who have made partners with Allah, Allah will, you will surely come to know. Ya Rasulullah, we understand, we feel you, that your heart, your chest gets constricted with what they say. It hurts you, you know, like just, you know, very hurtful words. Glorify Allah, do tasbih of Allah, along with the praise of the Lord and be of those who do sajda, right? This is a remedy for, you know, any kind of hatred, any kind of problem that come your way, you feel sad, depressed, angry, tasbih of Allah, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, al-azim. We do tasbih of Allah, that will open up your chest. And salah and worship is the only power. Allah says then, wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tika laqeen, and worship your rabb until the truth comes. Until that comes, keep worshiping Allah, or until you see the punishment coming to the disbelievers, keep worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hatta ya'ti yakal yaqeen. Yaqeen refers to actually death here. Until death comes to you, keep worshiping. So the so salah and the worship to Allah is the greatest power against uh, the opposition of truth, right? The people who go against the truth, the biggest power against them, the salah and the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So again, imagine the way the sahabas are going through and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles them through this world. Okay, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to implement and allow us to uh, take the Quran as the greatest blessing in our lives more than uh, whatever worldly possessions we have. Okay, well, let's start the next surah, inshallah, and then uh, we'll try to finish on time today. Give me a hands up. Okay, okay Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, we begin the next surah, surah al-Nahl, uh, which means the bees. Okay, the surah will mention, we'll talk about the bees. And this surah is very important for people living in the West, people who have a lot of blessings in general, right? Because this surah, another name of the surah is surah Ni'am, blessings. Because um, this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights the blessings and, uh, you know, and asks us to submit to him, worship him. And he's going to enumerate a number of blessings in the surah. And he's going to finish off the surah talking about Ibrahim at the end. He was a prime example of 
Shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, we begin. It's a Makki surah also. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atta amrullahi fala tasta'ajilu. The punishment of Allah has come. The command of Allah has come. Do not hasten. The previous surah ended. Hatta yatiyaka liqeen. Right? Wa'abdu rabbaka hatta yatiyaka liqeen. Until the yaqeen comes to you. Keep worshipping Allah. And Allah says, it has already come. Meaning the punishment of Allah has already come. Do not hasten to it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushikun. Allah is free from imperfection. He's above what they are associating partners. He doesn't have any partners. Allah sends down angels with the spirit of his order on whom he, on, on whichever servants he wishes. And We send down to the messengers so that they may warn the people that there's no one worship, worthy of worship except I, so they should worship. Does it fear me? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created the heavens and the earth with purpose, right? With wisdom. Allah is above whatever they're associating partners with. Allah created the human being from a drop of liquid. And look at him. He is one who is arguing, who is openly arguing. He has the audacity to argue uh, with you about the creator, right? We created him from nothing, a drop of fluid that, you know, is very pathetic, you know, and look at him, how he is so arrogant and stubborn in his place. And the grazing livestock, he has created them for you. Through the livestock, you get the warmth, right? Wool and cotton, you get that, you know, the jackets we have, you know, also the clothing, right? For summer and winter, we have different types of clothing to keep us warm and hot, right? Uh, uh, and also to keep us cool in summer. It has many benefits and from uh, you also eat from them. From the livestock, there's so much benefit that comes. We don't need a single part of livestock. We use all of it for our benefit. And for you, in these is elegance at the time you bring them to rest in the evening and at the time when you take them out for grazing in the morning. You know, imagine the animals, you take them out, you bring them in, this is beauty for them, right? Like this is a benefit of Allah. It's a sign of wealth, right? They would, they would show off their wealth because, you know, more camels, more... Cows, you have shows how much wealth you have. And similarly, you know, your cars, when you, you know, take them into the garage, you take them out, you know, park them. It's like a sign of pride, also a blessing for you. It's a sign of beauty for you, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates and, you know, uh, highlights here. Not only that, they also help you in carrying loads from to a land that is distant. If you didn't have them, it would have been very difficult for you to carry them to that land. Indeed, your Rabb is most kind and most merciful, right? Our cars, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting that they're able to carry things far, right? That you will not, have, you will not be able to carry it otherwise. And also the cattle, the livestock, all of that, because Allah is most kind and most merciful. And the horses and the mules and donkeys, uh, you know, you, you may ride them and you also take them as adornment and as beauty. And he creates what you do not know. Meaning there are things coming up that you, want, you have no idea about, right? Allah is predicting the future, that which includes the cars, everything. But there are other things you have no idea about that will come up like electric cars and what not, what other cars are coming up, right? And flying cars, what not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it, what you don't even know, right? SubhanAllah. And on Allah lies the, uh, and Allah lies the way to show the right path. It's on Allah to show you and guide you the right path. From um, So it's up to Allah to show the right path from the wrong path. He will show what the right is, what the wrong is. Through revelation, that is a something, uh, uh, a, a thing uh, incumbent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had Allah willed, he would have guided all of you together, but he has not because he has made this as a test to see who is going to use their eyes and ears to come to the truth. Allah is the one who sends down water from the sky. 
ومنه شجر فيه تسيمون through this water you drink from it you also use it for your vegetation you also give it to your cattle ينبت لكم به الزرع والزيتون والنخيل والعناب ومن كل الثمرات and he grows for you crops and olives and date palms and grapes and all of the types of fruits in the vidalika la ayat al liqami yatafakkarun verily in that or or is a miraculous sign for a nation that reflects was sakhara lakum al layla wal nahar wal shams wal qamar and allah has made the night and day and the moon and the sun and the moon subservient to in service to you one nujuma musakharatun bi amri and the stars are also made subservient to you by his command in the fidalika la ayat li qawmi yaqilun verily in that are many miraculous signs for a nation that understands right why is there night why is there day sun moon all that is bringing to our benefit will you not understand wa ma jara lakum fil ardi mukhtalifan alwanu and all that he has created for you in the earth of different colors right different types of fruits different types of things he didn't make the entire thing just you know one color he made different colors so you appreciate and you enjoy the colors in fi dhalika al ayat al liqami yadhakkarun verily in that is a miraculous sign for a nation that reflects You know all these things Allah mentions. You know Muslims should have PhDs in all of these things, right? So that we can appreciate the signs of Allah. Allah says these are signs for people who reflect, people who understand, people who take heed, right? So reflecting over them is very important. Wahu alladhi sakhar al bahar. Allah is the one who made the sea subservient to you. You know the sea is you know the waves they come to the shore and then they just turn back. I guess they want to come in the earth. Someone is pulling them back, right? Right. Um, لما طغى الماء حملناكم الجارية, right? Allah subhanahu wa taala who who's restraining them, holding them. سخر البحر يتأكل من so you can eat from it, like you know delicious fish and whatnot. لحم طريا fresh feet, uh, fresh meat. لحم طريا Allah appreciates the uh, seafood by the way. We should consume that more. لحم طريا uh, you know uh, fresh meat. وتستخرج منه حلية تلبسونها and Allah says you extract ornaments that you wear from it. وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ and you see the ships traversing in it وَلِتَبْدَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ so you may seek his bounty right ships can go from one place to another so you can do the trade easily and also traveling across the earth is made easy because of the ship وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah has made it you know like naturally you would think you know something like two hundred thousand tons two hundred thousand the weight of a ship a cargo ship is two hundred thousand even more than that Such a heavy thing is just floating in the water. Subhanallah! It's like Allah has made it. Sakhara lakum, so you may seek the bounty from it, so you may be grateful for what Allah has given to you. Walqaf la darawasi and tamid bikum. Not only that, come to the land. Allah has put firm mountains in the land. What is the purpose of mountains? Why are there mountains? Mountains act like pegs. You know, like if you're putting a tent up. You put these pegs at the edge so the tent doesn't fly away. Just like that, the earth is, you know, very unstable. So to make it firm, Allah has put these mountains, right? Like pegs. Like the bottom of the mountain is much bigger than the top of the mountain, as like it's serving as a peg. Allah has put firm mountains so that you don't swing. Right, the earth doesn't swing with you. And Allah has put rivers. So that you may be guided to the right path. Wa alamat, and Allah has put landmarks. Right, Allah has put different things on earth for you to travel, and Allah also put landmarks in the sea for you to travel. So you know, in the desert also, there's landmarks that you can know. Okay, you're going north, south. This is you know, from here take left, right. Allah has put these things for you to be guided. Wa bin najmi hum yahdadun, and by means of stars, they also get guidance. أَفَمَنْ يَخْلُقُ كَمَنْ لَا يَخْلُقُ Is then the one who creates equal to the one who does not create? Can both be equal? This is who Allah is. This is what He has done. Show what the other gods have done. أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Will you not take heed? Right? Allah has enum is enumerating the blessings from ayah number 4 to 16. All these are blessings of Allah on human beings. So therefore, we should only obey Allah and worship Him. Right? And no one can deny him after reflecting on these blessings, right? But then people are still ungrateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's blessings because they don't see it, right? When ta'udu ni'matullahi la tuhsuha. Again, the same ayah Allah brings it. If you were to count the blessings of Allah, you cannot 
counted in Allah Ghafurur Rahim. Indeed, Allah is most forgiving and most merciful. Allah knows what you hide and what you disclose. But those people whom you call upon besides Allah, those other gods, they do not create anything while they are created themselves. They are dead, they are not living beings. These idols, Lat and Uzza, Naila, Asab, all these saints, grave, all this is dead. They are not alive. And they do not realize at what time they will be resurrected. They have no knowledge of the future. Your ilah, your God is one ilah. But those people who don't believe in the hereafter, their hearts refuse to acknowledge. Right? The reason why they don't want to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because their hearts don't want to believe in the akhirah. Right? They don't want to acknowledge it. And their arrogance. What is arrogance? Arrogance is Arrogance is you deny the truth and you look down upon people. When a person has this in him, you know, I am somehow big, better than others. Exactly what shaitan had. Right? Right? Seeking greatness. Right, I'm somehow different by the way I look from the way where I live, the neighborhood I live. I'm different because of their istikbar, their qulu, their hearts refuses to accept the truth. No doubt, Allah knows what they conceal and what they disclose. Allah does not like the arrogant ones. And when it is said to them, What has Allah sent down to you? What has Allah? What is the revelation of Allah about? Their response is old stories of the past. You know, Quran, you know, the same old stories. You know, our, our grandfathers used to talk about this. Nothing new. It's backwards. Fairy tales, you know, just you know, just this, this and that. Not, not reality. Allah says, They are going to carry their burdens fully on the day of judgment. For what they are saying, for what they are doing, they will carry the sins on their back. Not only they will carry their sins, but they will carry the sins of those whom they misled. Because of their wrongdoings, their children followed them, their families followed them, and their communities followed them, their co-workers followed them. Everybody who followed this wrong path, they will be carrying the load. How bad is what they have been? We know bearing. Indeed, people before them also plotted. They plan to go against Allah and His Messenger. But Allah destroyed them from their foundation. Right? They were planning for years to destroy Islam, to you know hurt the Muslims and whatnot. But Allah had like came and attacked them from their foundations. But nothing was left. Even the children could not carry this forward. And, their, and the, the walls fell on the ceiling, meaning they were destroyed and their homes were left, you know, abandoned. And old homes, what happens? And the first thing that gets destroyed is the ceiling. The ceiling falls first, and then the walls become weak and the walls fall on top of the ceiling. So Allah says, the wall fell on the ceiling. It's an expression to show that they were complete, there were ruins left, nothing left. And Allah punished them. The adab of Allah came from where they could not even imagine. Then not only the adab in dunya, but the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disgrace them. And Allah will tell them, where are those partners that you used to worship? Where are those people, those, those things that you rely upon besides Allah? Where are those people that you used to disobey in? The people of knowledge will respond uh, to this question and they will say, indeed, disgrace today are the disbelievers. Who are the disbelievers? There are those when angels come to take their souls, right? Angels come to take their souls because they were wronging themselves. They will offer submission. They will say, we believe now. We'll give up all the haram. We'll submit to the truth. We have become Muslims. We did not used to do anything bad. Please forgive us. We are good people. They will admit them. They will take a definitive position. 
Allah says, Bala, in Allah Alimu Mima Kuntum Tamalun. Yeah, verily Allah knows exactly what you would be. Enter the gates of hellfire, remain in it forever. What a horrible place is that for those who are arrogant. Again, the arrogance come in, right? The moment we feel we're above others, right? That's when arrogance. And a person who has even an Adam's weight of kibir does not enter Jannah. Adam's weight, little bit of kibir. That is, kibir is only a garment of Allah. Only Allah is allowed to have it. When it is said to the people of Taqwa, what has Allah revealed? You know, when, it, when the disbelievers are asked, when the weak Muslim is asked, what did Allah reveal? Oh, Asatul Awaleen, Yellow Kuchpatani, you know, Molli Lok, Kuchpatan, Butlu Bolterat, you know, Asatul Awaleen. That's their response. But for the people of Taqwa, what is their response? Qalu Khaira, Allah, whatever Allah has revealed is the best. For us in dunya and akhirah. fi hadihi dunya hasana. For those who do good in this dunya, Allah will give them the best. What does it mean the best? Allah says the people who do good, do take the best of the Quran, implement the best out of it, then Allah will give them, number one, good life. Hasana means good life in this dunya. Allah will give them content heart. A, itminadul qalb, a pure content heart. Allah will give them Opportunities to do good deeds, right? Opportunities to do good deeds, to do amir salihat. And lastly, Allah will give a good name for them in this dunya. Even after they die, people remember them for generations in the books of good people. So Allah says, those people who excel in good, Allah will give them the best. Verily, the home of the hereafter is better. What an amazing place is that for the people who are righteous. They will have gardens of Jannatu Adn, Jannah of gardens of eternity. Forever they will remain in it. They will enter it. Rivers will be flowing underneath them. They will have whatever they desire. Jannah is all about desire. Whatever your nafs wants, everyone has different desires. Some people are fond of food, some people are fond of money, some people are fond of women, some people are fond of, you know, just different things like reading books, some people are fond of swimming. Whatever you're fond of, whatever your nafs wants, Allah says, Lahum fiha ma yasha'oon, kadhalik yajizillahu muttaqeen. That is how we reward the people of taqwa. Taqwa are people who restrain themselves from haram. In this dunya, they are restraining from haram. Even fasting is to develop taqwa. They restrain themselves from haram. Allah gives them what they actually want. When the angels come to take the life of these people, the good people, and they are going to be in the good state, free from shirk. They will say, Salamun alaykum. Right? It's not like the disbeliever saying, Salam. We, we submit. No, no, no. The angels already know this time that you have submitted. They will say, Salamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Imagine that greeting. This is what a believer should be living for. That when I die, when I see the final moments of my life, I see a smiley face of a beautiful angel with a beautiful garment from Jannah, clothing of Jannah. And he says, Salamu alaikum, and enters, you know, and takes my soul. Udukhulul jannata bima kuntum ta'amaloon. Uh, angels will say, enter the gardens because of what you used to do. Not what you used to know, but what you used to do. Right? SubhanAllah. Illa ma kuntum ta'amaloon. So I think that's a good place to stop, inshallah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to implement on this ayat. May Allah make us of the people of taqwa who truly implement, who have, uh, who understand the blessings, the surahs of blessings, by the way. All the blessings we have, every single thing, by the way. Allah says, Allah will question you for every blessing we have. Now, all these blessings Allah has given us, it is a blessing of Allah, but use this to obey Allah. Increase in your ibadah even more. If Allah has given you more, then your sujood has to increase more. Your recitation of Quran has to increase even more. Sadaqat has to increase more because Allah has given us way more than what we deserve. So, shall I stop here? So again, um, quick reminder again, tomorrow we'll start from 4.45, 15 minutes earlier. Okay, 15 minutes early uh, from tomorrow onwards. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimatihi. 
اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اجعل القرآن لنا في الدنيا قرينا وفي القبر مؤنسا وعلى الصراط نورا وفي القيامة شفيعا وإلى الجنة رفيقا ومن النار سترا وحجابا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان ربك السلام عليكم